the seventh grade welcomes you to our school mass in honor of our veterans. We thank Father Andre as he celebrates with us today. We gather today to honor those great men and women who have served and some who continue to serve our country so that we can enjoy the freedom we have today. Peace I leave with you. Peace you have given to us and for that we are forever grateful. Today we are thankful for those who have served and we pray for the safety of those who are actively protecting our country today. One of our most precious freedoms is to worship as we wish. We are happy to come together to celebrate our Veterans Day Mass. Would our honor guard please form? <laughs> We bring up a flag that is the symbol of our country, the United States of America. A globe is carried as a symbol of our prayer that one day we may all live in peace. We remember all our veterans, those who are actively serving, those who have served our country courageously in the past, and those who have sacrificed their lives. In their honor, we present their division flag. Veterans, when your division flag is presented, we ask you to please stand. The Coast Guard. The Air Force. The Navy. The Marines. The Army National Guard. One of our most precious freedoms is to worship as we wish. We thank God for this freedom as we worship together today. Let us take a moment in silence to prepare ourselves for our Mass. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans why we fall God bless America my
the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, it is a joy to gather together with all of you on this special Veterans Day celebration as we come to honor our veterans and to lift you up in thanksgiving, to pray for those who are still serving in our military in this holy sacrifice of the Mass. In a special way, we want to welcome our Sheriff, Sheriff Sonye, also our school superintendent, Dr. Williams, and all of our veterans and our parents who join us today. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate these mysteries, we take a moment to call to mind our need for God, for His mercy, and to ask the Lord for His mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us be seated as we listen to God's Word. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we, though many, are one body in Christ and individually parts of one another. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us exercise them. If prophecy in proportion to the faith, if ministry in ministering, if one is a teacher in teaching, if one exhorts in exhortion, if one contributes in generosity, if one is over others with diligence, if one does acts of mercy with cheerfulness, let love be sincere, hate what is evil, hold on to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Anticipate one another in showing honor. Do not grow slack in zeal. Be fervent in the spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Endure in affliction. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the holy ones. Exercise hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Have the same regard for one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. The word of the Lord. Praise Please respond. In you, O Lord, I have found my peace. In you, O Lord, I have found my peace. O Lord, my heart is not proud, nor are my eyes haughty. I busy not myself with great things, nor with things to sublime. In you, O Lord, I have found Nay, rather, I have still quieted my soul like a weaned child. Like a weaned child on its mother's lap, so is my soul within me. In you, O Lord, I have found my peace. O Israel, hope in the Lord both now and forever. In you, O Lord, I have found my peace. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. One of those at table with Jesus said to him, Blessed is the one who will die in the kingdom of God. He replied to him, A man gave a great dinner to which he invited many. When the time for the dinner came, he dispatched his servant to say to those invited, Come, Everything is now ready. But one by one, they all began to excuse themselves. The first said to him, I have purchased a field and must go to examine it. I ask you, consider me excused. And another said, I have purchased five yoke of oxen, and I am on my way to evaluate them. I ask you, consider me excused. 
And another said, I have just married a woman, and therefore I cannot come. The servant went and reported this to his master. Then the master of the house in a rage commanded his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town, and bring in here the poor and the crippled, and the blind and the lame. The servant reported, Sir, your orders have been carried out, and still there is room. The master then ordered the servant, Go out to the highways and hedge groves, and make people come in that my home may be filled. For I tell you, none of those men who were invited will taste my dinner. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. I'm sure all of us can think of a time where maybe we know that something exciting is getting ready to happen. Um, a great trip, or maybe you know, a big group of our friends are going to be getting together, and and all of a sudden we get the invitation to go on the trip, or to go to the sleepover, or to to be a part of something awesome that's happening, and and we start making sure that like we're we're able to do that, and so if we need to get out of something, we'll you know try to um, you know ask for permission to get out of that. We'll ask our mom and dad, hey, you know, make sure that I can go on this great adventure on this exciting thing. I'm thinking about that and think of times in my, in my childhood where, where that was the case and excitement there. And so Jesus is extending an invitation to us to this great banquet. And Jesus is excited about it. What Jesus is extending the invitation to is one, to, to dine with him forever in heaven, meaning to be with him forever in heaven. And then he's extending this invitation to a relationship with them here and now. Jesus talks about, you know, dining, table fellowship. This, this means friendship, right? Jesus desires friendship with us. Jesus desires this intimacy, this relationship. But he talks about that when he extends the invitation that there are, and he uses examples in his parable, but there are, there are excuses that sometimes we give. You know, I'm too busy. I need to go attend to this. You know, I that have family obligations, different things that will, that will preclude us from, from saying, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to re respond to the invitation to be your friend, Jesus, to be in intimacy with you. And so Jesus says that when people give those excuses and they say, I, I'm not going to respond to the invitation, that they go out and he says, you know, send the messengers out and, and invite others. The ones I invited did respond. So go and invite everyone that you can fine, and tell them I want to come, I want them to come and dine with me, I want them to come and be my friends. So to respond to the Lord, the Lord today is, is extending an invitation to us, and he wants us to respond, to come and to, to eat of his flesh and his blood, to come and be his friends, to come and listen to his word, to come and to be saints. Now, St. Paul in his letter to the Romans today it talks about the fact that we are all members of the body of Christ. But Paul, different times, you know, he's talking about how the body of Christ is one, that we are united, but we're also diverse. We have different gifts. We have different abilities. God, when he knitted us together in our mother's womb and he knew us, he said that I'm going to give some certain gifts, some the ability to listen well, some the ability to preach, some the ability to be compassionate, right? Some the ability to, to, to be a great leader, right? All these different gifts. And then he says that when you identify these gifts, serve the Lord with generosity, right? Don't hoard your gifts yourselves, but be ready to participate in the mystical body of Christ by building up the kingdom of God. And then he talks about these different attributes or virtues of the Christian, right? the generosity, the kindness, the compassion, the servant's heart, the humility. This is, this is what we're invited to, that to, to come and to dine with the Lord and to be his friend and to, to participate in his banquet is saying that, Lord, I recognize that you have given me life and my life is meant to be lived in service to you. Brothers and sisters, there's a reason why in our area of Homa Thibodeau, these bayous, if you ever go to a cemetery and you look at the cemetery, on almost every section of cemetery, you see these, these special plaques. And these plaques signify that the person who's buried there served in the armed forces. 
They joined the army. They joined the navy, the marines, the air force, the coast guard, right? All these different branches of armed service. When the 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 uh, the country was called to go into World War II, so many, both of my grandfathers, my dad's dad and and the army, my mom's dad in the navy, they stood up and they said, "I will serve." Today, so many of our people in this area stand up to serve and. You know, I, I think it's no coincidence that we see this vast number of people in armed forces in our area because of our deeply Christian faith. We were founded on our faith. The reason people came down here. And this generosity of spirit that we're called to have as a Christian, this desire and this calling to recognize our gifts and our call to service, our call to, as Jesus says, lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. A calling to give of ourselves elicits from us, it, it, it stirs in us the spirit of service, the spirit of service. And on this Veterans Day today, as we are so blessed to have so many veterans who are here, who represent all these years of service to our country, standing for the cause of liberty, and freedom and justice to try to, by the gift of themselves, build a better world, a world that, that our country was founded on, right? on, on life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, freedom for every human being. And we were all made with that same dignity, the image and likeness of God, to fight so that all could be free, so we could worship, so that we could pursue our dreams and our destiny. And so today, as you see all these veterans in here, as, as, we, as we worship with them today at Mass, worshiping the Lord together, and as we honor them in our ceremony, let gratitude for their service build up. In their own unique and individual way, they responded to the call of God to not live one's life for oneself, but to live it in service for others. Jesus says, I did not come to be served, but I came to serve, to lay my life down as a ransom for men. So as we hear this call to service, as we hear this call to, to answer the call to come to the Lord's banquet, some of us may join the military, some of us may become priests, some of us may become teachers, some of us may become doctors, or all these different ways that as the people of God, we use our gifts and talents to serve the community. If we, all of us, in our own unique way, pass on the faith, invite other people into the banquet of God. We hear that, we think of, Lord, what do you ask of me? May I not give that excuse that I hear in the gospel, for whatever you call me to, however you call me to serve you with my life. Whatever you ask of me, Jesus, however you call me to, to participate in the mystical body of Christ, may I say yes to you. Yes, Lord, I will serve you. Yes, Lord, I will follow you. Yes, Lord, I will, I will be your friend. I will dine at the table with you. Yes, Lord, I want to love you and serve you in this life because I want to love you and serve you in the life to come. We, we hear the Lord call us, respond with that generous yes to him. On this day, we ask God to continue to bless the United States of America and especially pray for God's blessings on the leaders of this nation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That God will direct church leaders to rule with justice for all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the many families, especially children who seek safety in war-torn communities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That those who govern will use their authority to secure freedom of religion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, God. For our veterans, especially those present, that God may bless them in a special way for serving our nation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, God. For those soldiers serving our country today in our fight against terrorism, may God protect them and keep them safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, God. That God may bless each of us and keep America as the land of the free, the home of the brave. We pray to the Lord. Lord, God, our grace. For all the intentions on our prayer wall, on, in our prayer intentions book, 
and those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, hear and answer these prayers that we have presented to you in trust and confidence as we pray them through the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation, and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father, most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word to whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up to you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have sent us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My brothers and sisters, with longing for the coming of God's kingdom, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. This is for the ones who heard the fight for freedom calling. For the ones who answer, I'll do what I can. For the ones who ran to battle, who believe that freedom matters, all oh, this is for you. Many the gifts, many the words, one your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eli 5, 7, R, for receiving the chalice, praying this week for that openness to God's call, special way on vocation to wear this week. God calls some to uh, this radical way of following him and priests that are consecrated life, and that would be our calling we would have the courage to say yes. So bless y'all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all peoples are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, and that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These words, taken from our Declaration of Independence, were the driving force of our veterans who are willing to risk their lives that all may enjoy these rights. 
In both peacetime and war, these veterans stood for dignity of humankind and their rights to live in security and peace. We salute these brave men and women who lived lives of commitment to God and country. We are proud of their accomplishments and happy to have many of them in our presence today. On behalf of St. Bernadette, we thank you for your service. I would like to introduce you to, to first class Chase Picard. Who grew up, he grew up in our area and attended Mass here at St. Bernadette. He is eager to tell us more about himself and why he joined the United States Coast Guard. First class Picard. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I am deeply honored to be here today, and I want to express my heartfelt gratitude for the invitation to be a part of such an incredibly important event. To the veterans among us, your dedicated service to this nation is the very reason we can gather here today. Your selfless actions continue to inspire others, encouraging them to defend and protect our country. Please allow me to share a bit about my background. I am from Homa, Louisiana. My childhood was spent in the apartments behind us. My grandmother brought me to Mass in this very church. Reflecting on my early years, I recall a time when I was uncertain about the path my life should take. I often felt lost, lacking both direction and confidence to be someone significant. Academically, I struggled in school. It wasn't until my senior year that a former teacher from St. Bernadette, who had served in the United States Coast Guard, suggested I should enlist. This suggestion came two years after Hurricane Katrina, a time that profoundly impacted our community. The Coast Guard played a vital role in the aftermath, rescuing over 33,000 people. Witnessing such extraordinary acts of selflessness ignited a deep desire within me to serve this country. I had no inkling of the immense impact that decision would have in the course of my life. My first assignment out of boot camp was at the Aviation Training Center in Mobile, Alabama. I was thrilled to be around the helicopters and planes that I had seen on the news. My first division officer was a pilot of a Coast Guard jet called a Falcon. One day, he invited me to fly on board while he did some training with another pilot. They allowed me to sit up front in the cockpit and watch them in action. I was amazed at how fast this jet was. We flew all the way to Louisiana, then landed to refuel. While at the airport, the pilots received word of a distressed ship in the Gulf of Mexico. A crew member had fallen and needed to be taken to the nearest hospital. However, due to their distance from shore, the ship would not reach land in time. The Coast Guard sent out a helicopter as well as a jet I was on board to rescue this crew member. The feeling of being a part of saving someone's life was incredible. Every day, there was someone on watch, ready to make a save just like that one, whether it be in a helicopter or a response boat. Later in my career, I decided to go to a cutter. It's what the Coast Guard calls it ships. While in boot camp, I saw videos of the ships out at sea. The mission seemed important, but I was terrified of the idea of being away from my family for that long. Often when out at sea, you have no phone or internet to contact your loved ones. It's just you, the crew, and the open ocean for weeks, sometimes months. As scared as I was, I knew how important it was to do what I had joined to do. Life at sea was hard. You wake up early, you go to bed late. You're always training in case of an emergency. You're always studying and training on firefighting and ship rescues for when the time comes. As stressful as it is, you feel a sense of pride being ready to meet it. One night, we received a call that a sailboat had broken its mast in the rough seas. The two sailors had been stranded in the ocean with no way to get home. Thankfully, we found them and towed them back to land. That's when all the hardship of being at sea made sense. For that moment, when we were needed, we could help. Military life is not always easy. I've missed countless events and precious time with my family and community. Every time you move, you take your family to a new place, meeting new people, learning new jobs, and your kids attending new schools. It's a lot for military members and their families to handle. However, it's often about the perspective you have. What may seem overwhelmingly difficult could be an opportunity to learn and make a difference. The people you meet can introduce you to things that you may have never known about. Today, I stand before you after serving in the United States military for 16 years. This marks my seventh duty station, ranging from as close to Alabama to as far away as Guam. I have now flown in the very helicopters that saved lives during Katrina and driven ships towing broken masted sailboats to safety. I've repaired navigational buoys displaced from storms from Texas to St. Croix. All along this journey, I've been incredibly fortunate to meet remarkable individuals who have profoundly shaped my perspective. It's veterans like those present here today 
who fuel my enduring commitment to the military, those men and women willingly leave their loved ones for extended periods dedicating themselves to ensuring the protection and safety of our citizens across the country. Once again, I extend my deepest gratitude to each of you, and especially to the veterans in our midst. Your unwavering dedication continues to inspire and remind us of the noble values that bind our nation together. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us today. We thank all veterans for joining us today. We ask all veterans to please stand. Let us show our gratitude by giving them a big hand. Welcome to St. Bernadette School's flag raising ceremony. Each November, we Americans remember in a special way all the veterans of the United States Armed Forces. Through their courage and sacrifice, these individuals have helped secure the freedoms we have in this country and other countries, the freedoms we sometimes take for granted. President Woodrow Wilson asks that all Americans pause on November 11th 1919, in honor of the nation's war heroes. Since then, America has set this state aside to, to remember and pray for all those patriots who have put themselves in harm's way to defend the lives and liberties of others. While Veterans Day is typically a tribute to America's living veterans, we will begin our program with remembering those who gave their lives for our country. Please bow your heads for a moment of silence to remember those brave veterans who died. We ask God to protect our service men and women, and we pray for the safety of those serving our country today. We will now do the presentations of colors. Our old flag is being replaced as a new one will take its place. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two veterans throughout American history, the stars and stripes have served as a symbol of their service. We should always show respect to our flag. Please wave your flags and join us in singing You're a Grand Old Flag. All right, students, let me hear you. Ready? You're a grand old flag, you're a high-flying flag, and forever in peace may you wave. You're the emblem of the land I love, the home of the free and the brave. Every heart beats true under red 
white and blue where there's never a post or brag but should all the quaint and be forgot keep your eye on is Riley Grow. I'm Vice President of the Military Museum, your museum in Houma, Louisiana on Bower Street. I want to thank St. Bernadette, the principal, the teachers, especially the students, and everyone that had anything to do with this presentation. I thank all the veterans that came out and it kind of gets to you when you start thinking about it. But anyway, thank y'all for what y'all done. Y'all can give yourself a big hand. Come see us at the museum. <laughs> joining us this morning for our ceremony and may God bless you for your yes to serve our county.